good evening thanks for staying back and uh, i'm not sure we are going to talk only in hundreds and thousands while i saw mr sabulwal and mr mitra speaking in millions and trillions and that doesn't happen in our world actually we have only about 3 and 1/2 thousand tigers left in this world <laughs> or in india at least um so i'll talk about my passion which is leopards i work a lot on uh, large cats specifically on leopards and that's when i did my phd on leopards though my undergraduation is electrical engineering i should <laughs> and i went to canada to work as electrical engineering and it was quite boring for me in the uh, early 90s itself so this is a bit of a story about this great cat this charismatic cat uh, which doesn't which survives very close to from where we are sitting and normally this is how we see a leopard as is one of the mega stars of india's wildlife tourism wildlife tourism one of the most uh, largest uh, gdp earners in the country is the tourism and this is one of the mega stars it's probably not like virat kohli or uh, sachin tendulkar but it's still mohammad shami and uh, jaspreet bumrah or r ashwin i would call it and uh, though that's how we see leopards in the current days uh, context but leopards have been on this uh, earth for a very long term a uh, long time 650000 years ago the first leopard evolved on this planet and it was called panthera pardus stockenbergi and it was actually preying on homo erectus and homo uh, homo erectus actually and of course um, in our uh, uh, in our culture leopards are seen everywhere you know you see lord shiva wearing a leopard pelt and during way back in 324 bc chandragupta maurya had actually banned all kind of leopard killing you couldn't hunt leopards during uh, mauryan period actually so it's it's got a very long history and uh, both in our culture and uh, our historical times and when we talk about wildlife this is what comes into picture normally we always think wildlife are found in this evergreen or green forest you know this is what comes into picture but uh, it's true for certain species but leopards are also found in a wide variety of habitats if you drive from bangalore towards mysore this is the kind of habitat you see the rocky outcrops of the deccan plateau which is about 3 billion uh, years old and can you see two animals in this picture on the top i'm saying two mammals the winner gets a prize rajesh can i assure it of the prize from wmg <laughs> okay there are two animals two large mammals in this picture what we normally think as animals which we'll see only when we go on a safari in rantambore or in bandavgarh or um kana but you can see it way very close to bangalore you can see all the both the mammals now a sloth bear there at the bottom and a leopard on the top and um, this is the magic of these rocky outcrops and this is the kind of habitat where i also was born and brought up i i was born in tumku district in a place uh, from i am from gubbi a small place so i i grew up and uh, uh, studied in government schools uh, actually in kannada medium and leopards are also found sometimes in agricultural fields you know you see a leopard pug mark down there in a maize um, a field and they are also found in the um, context of uh, where there is a merger of natural habitats and also human habitations this is a picture from south bangalore there's a nice gated community uh, where senior citizens live in this gated community mostly 60 plus um, they go for their morning walks they go for their evening walks they go for their night walks and when all the human activity shuts down when everybody has gone to sleep at the same location you'll see our <laughs> leopards walking around and very not very far from this place is also a school where my son goes to study and in the same school a father comes and picks up his son late in the evening and exactly 13 minutes after that a large male leopard walks past and my son studies in this school called as valley school on kanakpura road and we have identified through camera trapping there are four leopards within the school campus which uses the school campus apart from the 200 odd kids and the staff there are also leopards on the campus there and but unfortunately even today we call a leopard as a cheetah and a cheetah as a panther um though uh, recently cheetah was brought back into india because it went extinct in the 1950s largely due to hunting um uh, so the the leopard is widely spread in india but the cheetah went extinct in the 50s and recently brought back into kuno national park in madhya pradesh there's another uh, large cat very looking very similar to the leopard which is the jaguar but mostly found in south america and central america and it's got a different rosette pattern if you see the central one is the cheetah it's got a round rosette pattern with no blotches while the leopard has something called what we call as rosettes 
and the jaguar has rosettes with spots in the middle so next time you see a cheetah or a leopard please identify them properly and leopard has wide forms as well color forms one of the most popular one is the black form the melanistic leopard because of the melanism um, uh, levels in it it's it's found the uh, the the color black form animal is not just in leopards but it's also found in 17 other felidae species out of the 37 we have found in this world and of course apart from india sri lanka nepal bhutan and other countries also have the black form of uh, leopard these black leopards are found in 11% of their geographical distribution but there's also another one which is very beautiful which is the original pink panther you know this is called as a strawberry leopard um it's found in south africa i have read of historical documents of Uh, uh strawberry leopards found in reva in madhya pradesh uh, and recently i saw a picture which looked like a strawberry leopard but in india but not truly a strawberry leopard but this is the other form of the leopard which is a erythristic form of uh, the color form and uh, leopard is the actually the spider man of the man, uh, mammalian world you know it's unbelievable this picture demonstrates how skillful and how a uh, flexible this animal is its ankle can actually rotate almost 240 degrees and imagine we standing on a tree like this just visualize yourself on a tree with your hand and with your leg with that angle and trying to climb down a tree it's unbelievable because it's ev evolutionarily it has hoisted its prey including homo erectus up the trees for a very long time but when it comes to leopards we all know one individual you know um, i'm sure all of you recognize him jim corbett many of you may have read his books the manitos of rudrapaya etc etc but believe me leopards are much more beautiful and they're not savage animals like what you read on the books it's very unfortunate even today india's wildlife literature is mostly dominated by this while there are a lot more people who have got into genre writing the wildlife genre in, in india both in english and in local languages but it still hasn't caught up we still think uh, jim corbett is the bible of uh, wildlife in india um despite reading about leopards for a very long time we didn't knew this answer how many leopards are there in this country and it's uh, when i uh, i was not a great student in engineering in electrical engineering one of the reasons being mathematics i was not a great mathematics uh, student so when i i was very happy when i joined my masters in wildlife biology at kent in um, uk and the first class was on statistics <laughs> so we use a lot of statistics we use a lot of science wildlife biology is very uh, pure science as well uh, for counting leopards or understanding leopard numbers we use a very uh, simple camera which is triggered by infrared and every leopard has a unique aadhar number uh so it's got its own uh, rosette pattern if you see the difference on each leopard you'll see it's uh, the rosette patterns are completely different it's not just on leopards but it's also on all naturally marked animals including tigers um including jaguars giraffes and so many other species so we use this um, uh, methodology to identify individual leopards and using statistics we count what proportion of the population we have counted and what proportion we have missed and that's how we get to know the numbers but uh, when we do our camera trapping exercise we just don't see leopards but we also see a lot of the other nice things you know this male elephant a tusker i don't know what reason it took away six of our camera traps at one night you know he didn't realize can you see the camera trap between his legs he was carrying away i don't know six uh, i don't know perhaps gifted to his girlfriend or something couple of them and uh, we struggle hard sir to import these cameras you know go through all this process and it costs about 20000 rupees per camera and he took away six in a night and csr funding doesn't understand this they say why did you lose so many cameras in a year and some are very decent they are happy they just take our cameras and some are ruthless it's a small 450 gram camera trap actually and look at this 4000 ton you know 4000 <laughs> four ton animal you know he just smashed and you know smeared the camera trap into small pieces and next day you go to the field to collect the data and this is what you get to carry back home as a souvenir and um, our opposite camera recorded the entire event of 72 and we stitched the 78 pictures to put it together 
with a nice Kannada um, a popular Bollywood or a, a Kannada sandalwood uh, song. And this is what we get to enjoy in our lives as well. But we also get to get very close to them to understand, to form, formulate policies, to help the government to understand how to mitigate conflict with species like leopards, which are one of the most conflict prone species. And this is one of my most favorite animals. I had radio collared. We put uh, collars on them to track, satellite collars on them to track. I call, my son named it as Benki. Benki means fire in Canada, and it really meant fire. You know, this my this animal individual, which was about five years old when I collared him, he was really like fire. You know, you can see in his eyes. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life is the is the eye of the leopard. Um, it's one of the most fant fant uh, fascinating things on this on this earth. Better than Taj Mahal, please believe me. And uh, Benki walked around with uh, the very expensive jewelry on his uh, around his neck, um, and he was uh, he carried my jewelry for over a year and a half. And I found out that Benki requires a large home range of about 141 square kilometers. That's actually 20% of Bangalore's area. Imagine you are a single male, a large male, lording over all the females in 20% of Bangalore's area. That's amazing, you know. That's what I really loved about Benki. He had such a large area. And even after the collar fell off, he survived for uh, three years after the collar fell off. And every day I used to miss. In the morning, every day, one of the uh, most interesting things for me was to see where Benki was. And I started missing him so much more than my wife, actually. And um, of course, leopards, you know, one of the risks in our, uh, in our profession or our lives is that nobody gives us health insurance and also life insurance. That's the saddest part. If there are anybody from the uh, insurance business, kindly treat us more respectfully and treat us with more kindness. Anybody here? <laughs> okay, can you please the uh, video, play the video? And this was a leopard which came into a school, you know. I think it was a private school, so it preferred government school over private school. And uh, we were trying to uh, rescue the leopard, but also try to help the children not get injured by the animal. But uh, why I'm showing you this um, uh, video is this short video is that uh, animals are actually not dangerous. It was just that the animal was very panicked. It was in between thousands of people and the media and in Bangalore city in Whitefield. And uh, it was like uh, one of us being put in the midst of thousand leopards actually. And uh, the other thing is I survived. You know, it was uh, a contact period was only about 11 seconds. I ended up with 54 stitches and with six major surgeries with uh, both hip joints replaced and I can still walk now. So, <laughs> I'm sure you all go through these periods during March and April when you have to announce your quarters and other things. But I'll tell you, you can always jump back. You know, if you can survive a leopard and come back after 54 stitches, nothing beyond that. You can, but it's nice. You know, you uh, one of the unique things in my life I can very proudly tell is I saw death. Death was very close. Even today, I can hear the leopard roaring in my ears. It was so close. But even at that moment, I'll tell you the most interesting thing was the eye of the leopard. It was right here, the blue mixed green the the turquoise colored uh, eye of the leopard i think marvels of nature better than taj mahal please believe me and uh, yes as i said but it also came with a big cost of about 12 kgs within a month or two so a young man became a older man because of a uh, young leopard and even today you know we still continue with the pro uh, with the tradition of what the british left us like ics and one of this is the key thing uh, which uh, really threatens our wildlife in this country. And one of the hopes and everything uh, for India's natural resources is outreach and our future uh, lies with them because um, uh, what we lose cannot be gained in nature. You know, we can perhaps bring down Taj Mahal and rebuild it, but we can't bring down tigers or leopards. And there's no way you can uh, bring even with AI and chat GPT. And um, uh, as part of her outreach, one of the things we recently did was this new film on uh, wildlife. And I'll quickly show you the teaser. It's about two minutes. In the heart of southern India, where two great mountain ranges meet, two rivers flow. is a mystery. The 
other is a legend. Together, they give life. You switch on any. You switch on any OTT platform, any national, any channel which uh, produces and uh, puts up wildlife channels. What you see is a white man in front of saving these species. This is the first film, which is purely Indian-made direction, photography, editing, etc., etc. And I think we need to go beyond that white man syndrome. You know, there's a lot of potential, like. Uh, Mr. Sabarwal also said it's just that the poor people, I mean the people in the wrong place perhaps. You know, there's so much of potential. We are capable of doing these kinds of things as good as any other uh, Western culture can do it. So this is our daily life. This is what we survive on. And uh, this is what our wildlife brings in, our animals brings in. You know, when I talk in the context of numbers and also the context of uh, finances, the, the, there was a nice study by the Indian Institute of Forest Management in Bhopal, which evaluated the ecological economics of 10 tiger reserves. If you see, Simlipal Tiger Reserve brings in about 7,000 crore, 7,033 crore worth of ecological benefits or ecosystem services annually. You know, from our own backyard, Bandipur Tiger Reserve brings about 2,067 crores worth of resources annually. And just the what I mean. All of you know one thing, the rate of return is what you really expect. And nature is one of the most, nature conservation is one of the most profitable industries. You put in invest one rupee and you, the benefit which comes out is about 2,500 rupees. I don't know which other industry gets that kind of uh, uh, rate of returns. So um, these are the animals which actually bring in all these ecosystem services, including the leopards. And I'm sure we will have a lot of opportunities to work with you uh, through WMG. And because of Rajesh and uh, Shrika's interest, I'm up here talking to all of you. Thank you very much.